Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is Friday, uh, the 30th of November, 2018. I'm going to do my weekly uh, news video uh, to kind of catch up on stuff I thought was pretty cool or um, interesting. Um, first thing, I wanted to say thanks for everyone that's been liking the channel and subscribing. Uh, I appreciate it immensely. Uh, hopefully I can hit uh, 6,000 subscribers before uh, the end of December. Um, pretty much the news I'm going to go over is a lot like my channel, just stuff that I think is, you know, kind of cool um, that maybe, uh, you know, you hadn't heard of um, or it's not being talked about. I'm going to go over a lot of stuff that has been talked about this week, though. Um, first thing is uh, old Deutsche Bank and how their bank offices were raided by a... a an army of police. Um, I think it was like uh, 170 prosecutors, federal agents and police officers and tax authorities. That is insane. Um, but they've been uh, busted for money laundering. Um, it's been a pretty long investigation. Uh, it all, this, this article also goes over how... Uh, not quite insolvent, but how bad Deutsche Bank really is, um, and how their earnings for the last year were, I believe it said paltry, uh, and compared to, uh, other banks of their size. Um, but I'm just reading over this. It says the size of the raid sums, uh, and sums of money involved suggest that a years long effort to remake the bank's culture and improve compliance has fallen short. During the last decade, Deutsche Bank has paid billions of euros in fines for an array of misconduct, including deceiving buyers of mortgage-backed uh, securities, colluding with other banks to rig bitch March interest rates, and manipulating foreign exchange trading. To the detriment of who? You. Well, not you. Only you if you live in Germany or you have a uh, account with uh, Deutsche Bank. Um Still, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, they're used for illegal activities. That's what you got to stay away from. Um, and no offense to Deutsche Bank, but uh, nothing they've done can hold a candle to any other banks in the United States. Um, it's just insane what the banks have done. Uh, I think it was Amer uh, Bank of America or Wells Fargo. They actually had special containers made just for... The the Mexican drug cartel so that they could funnel money back and forth for, for laundering their money. Um, they actually had them specifically special made for that. Um, but still, nothing much happens. Um, <clears throat> and the way the system's set up, I mean, if you make a billion dollars and then you get fined $10 million, it's worth crime pays. It's worth it. It's no big deal. If nobody goes to prison and nothing gets closed and it doesn't end, then it's worth it. It's you no know, not that big of a deal. Um, so system definitely broken, but just another way to point out the hypocrisy of the banking system and uh, and how everything is is, is uh, you know meant to make crypto look bad, but in reality, you know, well everybody knows. Speaking of uh, going to jail. Uh, DJ Khaled and Floyd Mayweather um, were charged with fraud over an uh, ICO that they <clears throat> promoted. Um, nobody's going to jail, but they were fined. Uh, they're going to pay back about $500,000 in penalties and interest. So, pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> um, but it just shows, I think, this is, is kind of a good thing. Uh, it really shows that the, uh, the SEC is, is moving into the crypto space. Um, I mean, there was a lot of things that were blatant that they, they were saying that they had uh, partnerships with, I think, MasterCard, Visa, that they didn't have. Um, and I'm sure they really didn't, the DJ Khaled and Mayweather didn't really know about it. They're just, you know, celebrity spokespeople. Um, but, you know, that's how the cookie crumbles. Um, next, Amazon um, <clears throat> is starting up uh, a blockchain 
with a quantum ledger database and managed blockchain, the Amazon Quantum Ledger Database, the QLDB, a fully managed ledger database with a central trusted authority. Uh, if you remember, last year, Amazon dismissed the idea of getting into blockchain with AWS, and uh, but today, that's changed. The company announced a new service <clears throat> that I'm sure they just thought up in the last week. I'm sure they haven't been working on this for a year or more while they were talking out of the side of their mouth and saying that, that they're not going to have anything to do with blockchain and cryptocurrencies and blockchain are bad. Um, I'm sure they weren't working on it when they were saying that. But the company announced uh, a new service called Amazon Quantum Ledger Database, or QLDB, which is a fully managed ledger, ledger database with a central trusted authority. The service, which is launching into preview today, so it's already in at least beta, um, offers an append only immutable journal that tracks the history of all changes, Amazon said. So take a look at this immutable, fast, crypto cryptographically verifiable, transparent, easy to use, and highly scalable. What does that sound like? It, it's, it's ridiculous. And if you think about this, about a year ago, Google came out, was totally against all cryptos. Um, they were even banning channels. But they banned all ads. Um, I couldn't even post stuff on Facebook, on Facebook came out and completely banned all crypto. Um, I had a, I have a Satoshi Sean Facebook page. I was like, couldn't post so many things. They had no ads. Um, they still have no ICO ads. But uh, Google came out. There was a, they, they had no crypto ads allowed on any Google platforms. And Amazon came out. They all came out at the same time. Cryptocurrencies are terrible. Blockchain is no good. No. Now... We find out everyone's getting into blockchain. Facebook might be having their own cryptocurrency. Uh, <clears throat> Zuckerberg's sister is, I think, launching a coin or a blockchain. I'm pretty sure it's a crypto. Um, meanwhile, that's that was about the time that the bear market started. Um, people started pulling out. Everything started going down, and we're here. Now we're here at the bottom, and... Every, and they're starting everything up. Um, the SEC is looking at the uh, ETF. So it really does look like it's been played by all the big players, by Amazon, by Facebook, by Google, by Wall Street, by banks. We're sitting here at you know one of the lowest prices in, uh, in Bitcoin. All coins are down like 90%. Um, and now they're all ready to swoop in and and grab everything up it's uh it's interesting maybe maybe i'm wrong but speaking of lying and liars let's talk about old dr evil um or uh sorry dr uh dr craig wright um and the bitcoin fork or bitcoin cash fork oh my god i almost fell for it um bitcoin cash the fork was supposed to be a huge war, which it was a war. It, 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 it was a huge black eye for crypto in general, for the whole industry. Um, it actually made people doubt proof of work, which is freaking unbelievable and horrible. Um, to say you're part of Satoshi's vision, when you make people doubt the basis for what he he started as as for security on to secure the network make people doubt proof of work because of the, the massive centralization that's shown by veer and Wright is i mean blasphemy is ridiculous for me to to, to use but it is it's disgusting um i mean i'm very disappointed in roger veer i i think roger veer is of course kind of a dick um but he, he seems i always thought he's like his heart's in the right place he's just you know can be an asshole sometimes um right he's a, just a wannabe bond villain um and, and he's that's it um and but anyway not much happened of course Wright said that he was gonna 
do 51% attacks. He was going to destroy ABC. He was going to destroy any other coins that got in the way. He's going to kill Bitcoin. He's going to drop, which the market did drop. Um, but all this fighting, all these threats, um, it, it, it was just, it was terrible. But nothing really happened. You know, Veer brought on uh, additional hash rate, secured his network. Nothing. Just, uh, but, you know, nothing and lies is kind of what we've come to expect from Fo Satoshi. Um, so it's over. Thank God it is over. Um, speaking of Satoshi, he may be coming out of the woodwork and alive, but probably not. Um, and I'll even go back to, to freaking Craig Wright on this. Um, so Satoshi's uh, P2P Foundation, which was started back uh, like a decade ago, but has had no uh, no activity since 2009. Um, Satoshi, his, his profile, went on and added a friend and then also made a post. Just one word, a... Uh, N-O-U-R, no your. No one said no your. It looks like no your, but it's nur. Um, and then there's a lot of conspiracy stuff on this. Like it's like the Latin word nur or some other language means to fight in the against the darkness. And uh, then of course Craig Wright posts in uh, Arabic and some other language fight against the darkness. Like it's him. Like he's going on. He's proving he's Satoshi because he wrote this one word. Rather than just go on there and write, hey, I'm Craig Wright and I'm Satoshi. Here's my account. Um, but the email <clears throat> that's connected to this uh, to this account was hacked years and years ago. Um, so other, someone has access to it. There's, there's a bunch of other things it could be. It's been so long that the email could have been recycled and now somebody just, you know, got the email. And once you have that email, you, if you can reset your password, so on and so forth. But so it's probably not Satoshi. It's probably either the hacker or someone who just got, you know, got the email. But it's still interesting nonetheless. And another way that Craig Wright is kind of a dick. Next, we had a spike. Everything went up. Um, It also coincided with Amazon's uh, announcement of them coming into the blockchain. So it all kind of fed together. Um, But we had a huge spike. I mean, it, it shot up, um, but it looks like it was a bear trap or a bull trap because um, we have went we went back down again. Uh, I don't think I mean, personally, my opinion, not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but I think it's going to uh, going to be a little bit longer. It did. It was a really, really big spike. The reason I think it it happened was um because we finally hit that three thousand dollar mark, it was like thirty eight hundred or something like that. Um, and then when it started to go up, I think a lot of people started to jump back in, thinking this is it, which made it spike up even more, which made the spike so dramatic. Um, but we're we're back down. We're still higher than we were before uh, it bottomed out. We're not in the three thousands, but we're like holding at the four thousand uh, support level. More bad news about the bear market. Um, <clears throat> As Steam it, which I really like Steam it. I don't really make much money off Steam. I think I made like 80 cents. Um, so you should go on my Steam it for Satoshi Sean and like all my stuff. Um, but they're laying off 70% of their staff. That is a massive, massive number. Um, I, a lot of developers, just a lot of other staff. They, it says that they really, uh, their projections were a bit too. Uh, optimistic um as far as when the bear market was going to end so they're just they're just not able to pay everybody um i really hope that things turn around for them or the market or something um because they're they're a very very important part of the decentralized ecosystem um they're a uh they're an alternative for so many sites um they're, they're, it's a really important place. So I really think they, uh, I really hope things get, get turned around for them, but they're down to like 30% of their over 70%. So they're down to 20% of their, uh, of their original staff. Um, some interesting news 
which is, I think, very good news. Um, the U.S. court rules against the SEC, uh, a ruling they had made, that they wrongfully classified an ICO as a security. Um, why is this such a huge deal? Um, now, we all want, you know, some kind of regulation so that there's less uh, manipulation, uh, more structured framework for the industry. It's going to benefit everybody. Um, it'll allow, you know, institutional money and other money to come in. And not just institutional money, but, you know, mom and pop and grandma and grandpas who are just a little bit nervous. And with that, that little bit of regulation, it will be a much more attractive uh, place to put your money. So, we all do want the SEC to be somewhat involved. There's some kind of regulation and framework. Not totally in our business, but keeping an eye on things. Um, however, when they make a ruling, it's important. It's a big deal. But when the court makes a ruling, that's a huge deal. That's when things get cemented. Um, the court is where kind of all the BS is burned away and you have a real law. Um, your government, uh, they can pass any law they want. But when it comes down to it, the court can say if that law is just, unjust, is in America, if it's constitutional, if it's not constitutional. And then that's that's the real law. You know, you could say they pass a law, you can't, same-sex marriage, nope. That's that's the law for so long. And then they go to court and they say, no, that's that's that law is not cool. And that's it. There's There's nothing the government can do because the court has ruled. So the fact that the, that the court came out and overturned something the ICA, uh, uh, that the uh, SEC classified, that means the SEC is now kind of the, kind of the, the court's bitch. They know that's, that's their... Uh... And another thing is that the SEC doesn't want to create a lot of this... Uh, the framework for the laws. They don't want to be the ones to make all these decisions. They keep going back to the Howey test, which is like, what, 80 years old on what a security is? I mean, it, it's silly, but they don't want to create a new framework. They don't want to lay down uh, these these new laws. That it's, an, it's a totally new asset class. So the fact that the court's involved and the court's went against the SEC, I think that they're kind of put in their place and they're going to tread a little bit lighter and maybe maybe not not try to deal uh, which I don't think they should deal with such a heavy hand when it comes to the crypto market. So really cool that the that the US courts involved and that they ruled against the SEC and uh, and did and and did put something into law and on record of what is not a security. What is so they definitely know this is not a security. If there's another ICO, if there's another project, and it falls in line with what this was, it's not a security. We're not going to mess with it. Um, some odd news. North Korea is going to hold a, uh, a blockchain conference again, which I didn't even know they had one before, but they had one back in uh, August or October. It was a two-day conference. Um, <clears throat> I guess it went very well because... They're going to host a big, huge blockchain and uh, cryptocurrency conference. And it's going to be eight days long, over a week. Uh, which, it's, I think the price is like 3500 or it's like four grand. So it's kind of expensive. Um, but just really interesting. Um, kind of blew my mind a little bit. Back on the, uh, on the, uh, the SEC... <laughs> This is kind of a frustrating situation because it's really a catch-22. Uh, the SEC chairman, which the, the the board of the SEC, it's really about 50-50 when it comes to old, old ways of thought and newer ways of thought. So hopefully... Um, 
some of these old old line thinkers will come around to uh to to a new way of thinking but the chairman said that he really doesn't doesn't want to look at the ETF or approving the ETF for Bitcoin which they're supposed to approve this month or look approve or not approve this month um they don't want to look at doing it because there's the markets are so easily manipulated and until there's more of a rain on the manipulation they don't want to mess with it but until they're they do mess with it there's going to be a lot of easy manipulation um i mean i've talked to you know so many people like my family and other other people that if you have a million dollars or just a couple million dollars you can manipulate the market you're not i mean it's not like super rich people you talk about whales you don't have to be a billionaire to manipulate the market you can just be a, a millionaire I manipulate the market. I have manipulated shit coins. Just on exchange, I'm like, oh, that's so cheap. I have like 50 bucks left over. I'm going to get this coin. And it goes up like 11%. And I can see it go up on coin market cap. And it's like, you know, oh, look at me. I'm a whale. It's silly. But um, but it's like I said, it's a catch-22 because until all of this uh, institutional and and I think scared money comes into the marketplace. It's it's a lot easier for people with, I mean, small amounts of money. In in terms of uh, you know, super rich people. But if you, I mean, if our market cap was three trillion, then if you have a billion or a million dollars or two million dollars, you're not going to be able to affect the market that much, because you are not a whale anymore. You're just a little fish in a big pond where now there's a lot of big fish in a little pond. So they have a lot more influence on the market. So until I think I think if the if the ETF was approved and a lot of money started moving in, just the fact that the market would would grow so much, it would really take away a lot of the influence from these whales. It would also give influence to, you know. These terrible banks and a lot of the venture capital funds and and uh, institutions, but those institutions are watched a lot closer by the SEC than just your average, you know, millionaire. Um, so hopefully they make a good decision uh, this month and we get the uh, the ETF. But if not, we don't need we don't need it. It's just going to take longer for uh for for us to grow. This is interesting for a few reasons. It's a good article about how blockchain deployment, the uh, the technology, is going to add like $3 trillion um, in international trade by 2030, which I think these numbers are way off. I think either the amount of money is way, way low or the year is way, way high. Um, when you look at things that are – that are developed right now and are being developed um, we're much closer than 2030 um, and one one reason one, one reason I could I could say this and it happened this week is uh, a friend of mine made a post on Facebook and I read through it and it was so many comments on people talking about this issue and it was so frustrating because there's like two companies or two projects, companies, whatever that have, that have taken, that have, that have solved it. Um, when you look at like supply logistics alone, 3 trillion is nothing. Um, <clears throat> the, the thing she posted was about, a the USA recalls about a hundred thousand pounds of ground beef for possible E. coli contamination. And, uh, there's a friend of mine, Jasmine, she posted, Oh man, I can't believe it's like this in the United States. She said, "Does anybody know where like local farms are, so we can get our 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 stuff from local farms, so we don't have to trust this because there's this is terrible." And then all these people were talking about it, and commenting about it. Oh, what can we do? Oh, and there's so many. There's like a I mean, supply chain logistics, blockchain's already set up with our RFD chips that track your 
food from uh, from farm to the grocery store to your table. You can scan the barcode with the app. You can scan the the thing you're buying the 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 Louis Vuitton bag you're buying in the store. You can tell you where it was made, if it's real, if it's fake, all of that. Um, and it's done. Uh, it, it's already. I mean, there's already practical applications of it. Chinese government's picking it up. Um, I forget the name of the the food company, but they're tracking like the milk and the dairy. Uh, they're doing it to track um, immunization shots. When because I mean the Chinese government gave all those kids bad uh, immun- uh, immunization shots, and there's no way they can f- they can track where the supply chain broke down. I mean, with those chips, like you can track where your food came from, the whole chain until it got there to the store. You can see the the temperature in the trucks. So if there was a problem, you know who it was with, where it happened. Oh, the truck, the refrigeration broke down on this truck. That's what happened. It was, you know, the the meat was above where the temperature should have been for like seven hours. Now that developed the uh, the bacteria. Now you know where it's at. You don't have to recall 100,000 pounds. You know, it's like the 2,000 pounds that was on the truck. Something like that. So it was just frustrating because people just don't know, you know, what's already been done and what's out there. Um, and with the market, what's struggling when it can easily fix stuff like this? Supply chain, voting, so many things that are that are implemented now. Um, so three trillion, way, 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 way too, too low. And I'm thinking 2022 at the latest, we're going to be, it'll be huge. Um, because that's the one thing that businesses, Amazon, everyone else, they're really adopting it quickly. Uh, like, you know, cell phones, they blew up. They were, they, you know, they didn't exist. They were slow you had bag phones, car phones for years, and then smartphones came out, and boom, everyone in the world has a smartphone. And last one, go over another piece of good news is uh, Overstock.com. Um, the chairman of Overstock.com, our CEO, said he wants to get out of the retail industry and go 100% into uh, into blockchain. Um, that's just a, shows you how I was talking about big companies they they see the value in the technology they're moving towards it at a breakneck speed um, and another another thing that's interesting about the story is after he said that overstock stock had a giant spike it went up massively uh, so investors they know the deal um, as soon as blockchain is talked about in any major company, it's always good for a, for a stock jump. Um, well, that's about it for the week. Uh, I appreciate any comments you leave and uh, appreciate some likes. I will see you on the next video. You guys take care.